Hey, what's going on, everybody? We're back with another BKFC Reddit Ask Me Anything. We're joined by Whitney Johns. How are you doing? How are you? I'm doing amazing. It's been a crazy day. I think we're both feeling that. We were both just venting to each other about what an annoying day today has been. But but we're here now, and we're having a good conversation. <laughs> you have fought. So is there is there do you have a fight nickname, or is it you just you, you're kind of like Chris, where you're just like I just use my name. I just use my name. I just use my name. I mean, Chris jokes and he's like, you could be called the destroyer of worlds because, you know, I have had an ex or two say that to me and yeah. call me, but okay. you know, I, I, I've, that was a long time ago and it's a new chapter. So I'm just Whitney Johns when I go in there. Chris said that he likes to call you stone hands. Why is that? <laughs> Okay, so he's not wrong. I actually have, I really think it's like a genetic thing. He's like, your dad never played catch with you, did he? <laughs> Every time I try to catch, I'm like very clumsy. I like okay. knock into things. If you throw me something, it's like, it'll just like bounce off my hands. He's always like stone hands. I have multiple times a day where I have these clumsy moments and he's like, stone hands. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Chris gets to fight for a title. What's it like living with a fighter who's preparing for probably one of the biggest fights of his career? Is he, is it like, is he on pins and needles? Like he seems like he's a pretty mellow guy, so it doesn't affect him, but this is a monster fight. And he put some, he put himself, he gave himself a big ultimatum with this fight too. Yeah. So like, I feel like there's extra pressure. He's putting pressure on himself for sure. Um, it's fight camp is always, this is probably my maybe sixth or seventh fight camp of, with him okay. um, since we've been together and you know he's such a like seasoned vet when it comes to this that he's oddly calm and that almost like makes me more nervous because I'm like well are you okay are you doing everything can I help you should you be taking more Epsom salt baths you know I'm like trying to force him to be more like you know he's just so calm. It almost gives me anxiety, but I think that comes from just the level of experience that he's at. He's been doing this for so long. It's like second nature, but you know, this one does have a little more pressure on it because it's sort of like, okay, is he's nearing the end. He's kind of transitioning out of fighting. Um, and so it's one of those things where like, just, I just want it to go so well for him that I, I think I get more stressed out than he does. Um, it's definitely a lot to balance when it comes to the training schedule. And then this time he's been, you know, he's been working full time and trying to balance his, you know, his work in real estate that he's, you know, tr started and he started that whole journey and then still training twice a day and going really hard. And so I think it's just been a very, you know, it's very tiring. Fight, all fight camps are tiring. Um, but I might be more exhausted than him. Who knows? <laughs> so he and I had talked and he said, don't say anything, but I'm thinking about if this camp doesn't, or if this fight doesn't go my way, I think I might be done. And then I saw he did an interview the other day and he brought it up. So I'm going to ask you, you're somebody that clearly he ran this idea by first. Like, what do you, I mean, when he comes to you and he says, Whitney, like, if I don't win, I, I, I don't know that I want to fight anymore. Like, how do you, like, what do you respond? Like, how do you, how do you go, approach it? I mean, there's that part of me selfishly who is like every time he fights, it's, I swear it takes years off my life because I get so nervous and it's so, you know, I have to be like a few drinks deep, quite a few drinks deep to be like in the stands watching him fight. Cause it's so nerve wracking, especially sure. bare knuckle shit, right? Like that is very nerve wracking. It's gory. It's bloody. You get cut. And so for me, I'm like, you tell me this might be the last time. I'm totally fine with that because I feel like it's going to be better for my health. <laughs> but also, like, it's been such a huge part of our life and our core memories together as a couple so far. And it's so, you know, I feel like that would be a bittersweet thing to never have him be in fight camp again. So I, I'm kind of torn where I'm like, look, if you had a couple more, great. But if this was, you know when you're done and you're going to hang it up also amazing. And let's focus on the next chapter and, you know, the path forward. So I could take it either way. I just want him to be happy. I want him to feel that closure, no matter what, whenever he does walk away, I want him to feel at peace with the fact that he put it all on the line. 
He walked away on his terms. He did it the way he wanted to. And that he has the peace of mind to where if when he goes into retirement, he feels that closure and he feels good about it. So he's cornered you for quite a few fights. Have you ever thought about cornering him? Like I got to corner one of my buddies for a bare knuckle fight the other, you know, a couple months ago. Is it something that like interests you? Like you, you've, oh, I'd love to be in a corner or that doesn't interest you at all. You know, what's so funny is his first two fights that we were together for, I cornered him. Oh, okay. Because it was the middle of COVID. It was for PFL. And it was one of those situations where you had to quarantine. They had this crazy rule about quarantine for 17 days. You had to quarantine yeah. for 17 days before the fight. And he was like, who the fuck is going to stay with me in a hotel room for 17 days? Like no one, I'm not going to be able to get any of my coaches to do that. And I was like, well, but you know, I work from wherever I'm, I work remotely. I'm like, technically I am your nutritionist and you know, I train your core. <laughs> and so he's like, well then be my corner. I was pretty much fucking useless in that corner. Not going to lie. Like once his real coaches showed up, they were like, okay, just sit there and look pretty. <laughs> And I was so nervous anyways, because it was my first, it was my first time seeing him fight. And I was that up close and personal. So I actually right. do have experience cornering him. And it was, you know, it was very daunting. Definitely a new thing for me. So if Chuck Liddell can't make it, there's a chance that you might step in though, is what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm capable. I'm actually licensed in New Jersey. So, I mean, I'm sure Colorado has the same guidelines. Similar. Perfect. <laughs> okay. You mentioned that you're a nutritionist. I know nutrition's a huge thing. It's funny when I was talking to the guy who does all my graphics, he said, what should I put for her? He goes, she's an influencer. She's a fighter. She's a nutritionist. You know, your fitness per." He goes, he goes, what do I put? And I said, well, I don't know. Like, I mean, you have so many jobs, but it seems like nutrition's like the big one. Can you tell us about that? So I'm more of a trainer and a coach. Um, and I have a nutrition company. I have my supplement company as well. But I would, I would call myself a trainer and a coach first and foremost. And then, you know, my supplement company helps add to what I'm helping you with. So I've got the diet, the workouts that I can help dial you in, coach you through, help with your transformation. And then also my supplement line is really supporting, especially your hormone health, gut health, and brain health, which are so important. And one of the reasons why, you know, I'm very passionate about that is because you can, you can diet and work out all you want, but if your hormones are screwed and your gut health is all messed up and your mental health is whacked, then what good is looking good on the outside, right? So it's really about wellness from the inside out. So I would, I would call myself an entrepreneur in the wellness space. You know, that's more of my kind of steez. You've got the nutrition company. Could you recommend like, for, you know, like there's so many people that, you know, would love to exercise more. Do you have a couple products that are like for the, your average guy who, you know, tries to work out as, or, or, or guy or girl who tries to work out as much as they can, but you know, like they don't have the time, like, oh, I got a couple products that help you. Like, do you, do you have something like that you yeah. can tell us about? So it's interesting because one of the, um, one of the things I love about my nutrition company is that, you know, I'm very passionate about supporting fighters, but also yeah. supporting everyday people. So we've been able to support and promote and sponsor a, lot, a number of fighters actually, because one of our products is the, the nitric oxide booster is incredible for your VO2 max, your cardio, your performance, your oxygen uptake, um, and also your recovery. So it's amazing for fighters and they've been loving it, but also just for your average lay person who's trying to just have better fat metabolization, better circulation, and better sexual health benefits because of the circulation and the blood flow aspect. Um, it's, it's amazing for like, if you're just trying to add a little staple to your daily workouts, that's an amazing one for anybody and everybody. Um, another one that a, a lot of my fighter uh, sponsees love is the Brain Activate because it really protects the brain. It's okay. brain nutrition, but it's also really good energy and focus. So it's amazing for like before sparring. It's not going to give you that stimulants where they're all jittery before sparring, but they're laser focused. The formulation is amazing. Plus, it's awesome for you know people that get hit in the head a lot. Um, but that's also for the lay person who's just 
they have a meeting, they need to be on, or they're just sitting in front of their computer and they need to be focused all day. It's a really, those two are really great products for just the everyday human who's trying to perform better in life. I follow a lot of bare knuckle fighters and it's amazing the amount of bare knuckle fighters that I see like, oh, thanks, Whitney, John Nutrition. Like you're, you're getting a lot of them out there and I think it's great for you. I love it. I love supporting fighters. I mean, I would, you know, I've only fought twice, right? I've done two fights. Um, so I can't call myself a fighter. However, I got a taste of that medicine. I got a taste of that lifestyle and I have so much respect for what a fighter goes through, they put themselves on the line, like big time. Every single time they get into that ring, every single time they go through a camp, they are sacrificing their body, mind, and spirit to be there because they love it. And so for me, it was like, how do I give back to these fucking warriors, you know? And, and so it's been a cool opportunity to connect with all kinds of really cool fighters in the space. What did you do before you became entrepreneur? Like what, what are some like Whitney's old jobs that she used to do? Like what, where did you come from? Like, I know you're from Iowa or not Iowa, Idaho, right? You're from Idaho. Idaho. Yep. Idaho. You have to be the most famous person from Idaho that I know. <laughs> There's definitely more famous people than me from Idaho, but yeah, I'm from Idaho originally. Um, I started out, I mean, God, I've worked all kinds of jobs. I like, I know hustle. I was in bottle service. I did sale at what, you know, when I first moved to LA, I was working three jobs. I was doing bottle service till four in the morning, waking up at 6 a.m. many of the days to get to the office by seven. And I was doing phone sales for a, a women's professional organization, networking group, phone okay. sales. And then I was training clients in the afternoons. Um, so I've done anything from sales to to marketing a lot of marketing and a lot of sales i did you know personal training i did mo some modeling a lot of modeling stuff freelance stuff like that um and then i kind of decided to combine it all all those little skills and throw them into one big mixed bag that i am now <laughs> You mentioned modeling. We had a, a person submit a question. They want to know if you know how many magazine covers you've been on. I have been on 17, actually. It was, I just counted the other day. I just landed another cover and I was like, oh, this is number 17. And fun fact about that is I had not ever been, pub I'd been published in fitness magazines and I had been doing a lot of modeling stuff, but I had never been on the cover of a magazine until I was 35 years old. So oh, wow. between 35 and now I have racked up 17 magazine covers, which I thought is a pretty cool, you know, stat where it's like, don't give up on your dreams. Like I was working for, I was trying to land covers for so long in my career and you have to kind of know the right places and the people to work with. And you have to, you know, if there's a strategy to it as well. Um, but I think that would be a big message to anybody who thinks that, that age is really going to deter you from getting what you want. Like, no, it is about how much work you put in, the places you put yourself in, you know, the relationships that you build, like never give up on your dreams. So, yeah. Okay. Someone, someone submitted this question. They said, ask about her eyebrow, ask her if her eyebrows got messed up in her fight. <laughs> I don't know if you know who submitted that question, but uh, yeah, they said, tell us about your eyebrows from your fight. Oh my God. Okay. So well, what had happened was, so I was fighting in, this was my Dublin fight. So it's just boxing. Um, and the, in the corner, Chris is like, okay, it's, it's between rounds. Chris is in there like yelling, like, okay, this is what you're doing. Blah, blah, blah. And the, the cut woman, she kept putting like the Vaseline you know, she was supposed to kind of refresh the Vaseline. Well, she was putting it this way. Like she was like messing up my eyebrow and I could feel her doing it. Like it was like, listen, bitch, at this point, my eyebrows are all I've got. I got no makeup on in here. I'm a sweaty mess. I was like, so I took my glove and I went just to like straighten it. And she goes, oh, and she, she like did it again. She's like, no, 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 don't touch your face. She did it again the same way. And I was like, so I literally went like this and Chris was, <laughs> Chris was like, what are you doing? She kept, she kept like knocking my hand out and I was like, well, and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, is my eyebrow like, and he's like, shut the fuck up and listen to what I'm saying. You have 30 seconds until the next round. What are you fucking doing? It was so funny. It was like this little battle. And I was like, just 
give me my eyebrows. They're all they've got. <laughs> what made you want to take up boxing? I mean, like, is that, was it always a goal for you or like, Hey, I'm, I'm dating a, a fighter. I want to kind of like see what his world's like. No, see, I had always trained in boxing and kickboxing for just workouts. I loved, I had trained for years. Um, workout style, training, loved it, just conditioning, bag work, mitts, whatever. And I actually got approached by, you know, I was working with an agent who they were looking for an American to participate in this international boxing tournament for influencer boxing. It was like this big influencer boxing thing that they were, they were putting on. So my agent gives me a call and he's like, Hey, you know, they're looking for girls that can box. And I was like, well, I've never actually like fought. Like I've hit mitts. It's a very different thing. And they're like, well, you've got about eight weeks to train. And your first fight is at Wembley Arena in London with, you know, 13,000 people watching. It's like, oh, okay. Like this is kind of intimidating, but it was like, I had always thought about getting in the ring, but I was, you know, never sure that I wanted to mess my face up. And it was like, do I really actually want to fight? But then I was like, fuck it. Right. Like you live once, let's do it. And I had a team around me. I had all the, you know, all Chris's team. I had Chris in my corner and I was like, you know what? When am I ever going to chance to do this again? I was 36. No, I was 37. No, 36. I was 36 years old. I was like, I'm never going to be able to, to do this again. And what an opportunity and what a rush to do this, like on such a high level that like, you know, it would really put the pressure on me and really inspire me to go through a real professional fight camp and just get a taste of that medicine. And it was such a blast. It was such a wild experience. In Spain, they just had influencer bare knuckle fight. I don't know if you saw that. Is that something that interests you or you're, you're good with, you'll stick with the pillows? No, I don't think so. Chris actually forbade me because actually BKFC did approach me when I was doing the influencer boxing. They're like, why not? You know, we need more girls. And I was like, are you fucking serious? Look at those girls. They're monsters. They would kill me. I would die. Um, and Chris was like, I'm sorry, but that's literally, I, I have to step in at this point and draw the line. <laughs> Cause I was like, well, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> He's like, hell no. I don't think I could do that. Some of the fighters were curious if you got with Chris just because you knew he was so good with a camera and you needed your own personal camera person. Yeah, I was like, you know what? I need full time, just I need a full time videographer, photographer. He's like, I'm like, babe, now he's gotten to the point where he's really sweet and patient about it for the most part, but sometimes he'll be like, there, okay, there, you good? You got it? Perfect. Let's enjoy the rest of our fucking day. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> He's over that. <laughs> Have you been able to like, I feel like you've got the social media stuff kind of like figured out. Like, do you, do you like to help Chris and them like kind of reach new goals and like some of the other fighters? I feel like, like I said, I hear a lot from the guys that are like, Oh my God, Whitney helps me so much. Like, like, do you just love to give back or like, I mean, I love, like I said, I love to support fighters. I know also that fighting should be their main thing, right? Like we all have our strengths and unfortunately now in the fighting world, social media and marketing yourself is now just part of the game. Unfortunately for everyone that hates doing it, but that is the world that we live in. And if you can just just learn some of the basics to help promote yourself, to market yourself, to feature yourself. Um, you're going to end up getting better fights. You're going to get better opportunities. Like it's just part of the game now. So I love to help whenever I can or give, you know, some insight on things that I've learned along the way. Cause it's definitely been a long road for me of just learning the tricks of the trade and it's changing every day. Like there's every freaking day, there's a new platform. I'm like, can we just stick to one we stick to one social media platform, please. I'm sick of learning all these, you know, I'm too old for this. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love to help where I can. I know you guys recently moved out of the city, moved to suburbs. Is the goal though, I mean, like you, a after Chris retires, maybe like, is the goal to like kind of get away or, I mean, you, you work remotely. Would you, are you somebody who would love to like move to the mountains and have like a little homestead thing? Or do you love being yeah. where you're at? I mean, there's part of me, I'm loving where we're at right now. I've always been, you know, from the time I left Idaho, 
when I was 18 years old. I've always been a city girl. You know, I lived in LA for eight years in San Francisco. I was in Florida. I kind of bounce all around. I've always been a city girl. But now I've gotten, as I've gotten older, the more I appreciate like, damn, sometimes I just want to move to a cabin in the mountains with no Wi-Fi and just throw my cell phone out the fucking window. And it's a necessary evil, you know, technology. And But now you can do everything from remotely. So I am, you know, in a position now where I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's move out to the suburbs, get some space, have a yard. Like, let's go be in nature more often. We can, we can dip in and out of the city and that city life. I am not opposed to, you know, a Montana secluded life, <laughs> you know, not at all. I saw you guys go to Costa Rica quite a bit. They have a lot of crocodiles. Chris really wants to learn how to catch alligators. Is that something I could talk you into also the next time I'm in Colorado, we could all go catch alligators together? Yes, because you have, you have like a whole, like a farm, right? You've, it's it's like, not mine. I, I've worked there for like 20 years. So that, yeah, we have a gator farm though that's in Southern Colorado. We have over 300 alligators. So yeah, is that something you'd be interested in? Hell yeah. I've actually, he told me about, it. I think I was supposed to go with him. I can't remember where I was, but I wanted to go because I would love to go. See, I've actually been to some gator farms like out when I lived in um, Florida, went out sure. to a couple of gator farms out there. There, I mean, I'm not going to get too close to them, but I would definitely... <laughs> <laughs> with supervision i would pet one <laughs> yeah I, I was just thinking i was like we could get you like so we have like the happy gilmore alligator so you could like take a photo with like a celebrity alligator. he's like 10 foot long and he'll mm. try to eat you but you know like he, he, he's usually pretty good but <laughs> try to eat me yeah i might just keep my distance at least arm's length from are you on. an animal person yes you like animal? yeah like through and through yes What's like the coolest like interaction that you've got to do with animals so far? Like, do you got to do anything fun? With animals, I mean, every time I get on a horse, I feel like if there's some magical something that opened up in the universe, because I just feel like horses are just such a magical animal. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think of some really cool experiences with animals. I am so I'm, not a horse person. I think they're beautiful, but I'm just not a horse person. I am like in love with them. I actually, my therapist uses horses in our therapy sessions because they are just natural healers. Just even being in their presence, they're like these natural healers, Reiki masters. You know, they just seem to know where you need healing and will intuitively go to that. Um, I, I just love, I feel like horses are just magic. If I could have a, a land and horses on it one day, that would be a dream. Um, you know, I'm also like afraid of certain animals, like every day that we're going out, you know, out on the trails here in the suburbs, I'm like, is there a mountain lion? Like, are there bears? I don't know. You know, we just went to Wyoming on a pack trip and got to see moose, like a gigantic moose. And they kept telling us, there's wolves out here. There's grizzlies out here. And we saw grizzly tracks like this big. Right. We didn't get in to see them. They didn't pop out there. I would love to see them from afar, you know, on that trip. <laughs> Far enough away. Okay. So my last question that I usually ask people, like, I know you've done some, like, the boxing fights. Have you ever been, like, in elementary school? Did you ever, like, throw down and get in a fist fight in elementary school? Or you've never been in a fight prior to boxing? Never really been in a fight. You know, I've always seemed to be able to get along with people, like, in school. I never got in fights at school. But me and my sister used to brawl. Like, it was our job. And, you know, even my brother and I, we would, like, we would go ham. We would kick each other. We were, we were, we would fight dirty. You know, with sibling fights, it gets dirty. <laughs> there are no, no rules with sibling fights. Um, but, but yeah, no, I was pretty like diplomatic in school, I guess. I never really made a lot of enemies for that. Yeah. Well, you know, like someone's got to be the cool headed level one, you know, like, and that, that sounds like you're the, that person. Yeah. I think, you know, it's like, how much drama do you really need? If you're, you know, I try to like avoid drama if I can, <laughs> especially physical violence, but yeah. Was there anything you want to like speak about before we call it or like shout outs or any, like, you know, like anything, the message you want to put out before we call it a night? Well, you know, just get ready for the reigning champion of the cruiserweight division, Mr. Kamosi. What, what? <laughs> the king? 
I can't wait to bring that belt home and put it, you know, I was like, should we put it in the front room? Just hang it up above the couch. <laughs> He's like, it's going above the bed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. He's like, who's the champion? <laughs> no, I'm just so excited to see him kick ass. It's going to be amazing. You know, I'm going to definitely need some alcohol before it per usual because it's still scary as shit, but I know he's going to do so well. He's such a, he's just such a seasoned vet and, and such a pro and an animal. Okay. So technically I have one more question. So yeah. we've talked to a couple fighters and their, their wives get in as many fights outside the ring as, you know, like someone says like, Oh, Kamosi, you suck. Are you somebody like someone says something bad about Chris? You're like in that person's face or you just let it go. You know, I think I've been so accustomed to trolls on the internet because I've been online an online presence for so long. I have been, I have learned a very valuable lesson when it comes to idiots online, little keyboard warriors, like literally block, delete, give them zero energy because it just, that's all they're trying to do is take your energy. Why give them that power? Um, and so, yes, what, does, it, does it offend me when people talk shit about my man? Fuck yeah. When people are coming at me, I'm like, whatever, like a dime a dozen. But I think that, you know, it, it's a valuable lesson to learn to like not look at those comments. Like when I was doing the influencer boxing thing, I made the mistake of going down the rabbit hole of the comment section. And yeah. it's so sad. Like I got a taste of what fighters have to deal with because it's like, okay, they just went out there. They gave their all, they put everything on the line and now whether they win, whether they lose, like people come out of the woodwork just talking shit. And if they have some opinion about what they should have done or how they're such a, you know, whatever, like this is all the shortcomings. And I had to learn like, okay, I'm not going to look at the comments anymore. So on my second fight, I was like, I'm not even looking at the comments because it doesn't matter what I do, whether I win, lose, whatever. Um, and hopefully, you know, fighters, can heed that advice a little bit too. It's like, literally you need to have blinders on of just like mind your own business. Like what everybody else is thinking, do not give them the power of taking your focus away, which is the, the most important thing you can have. Um, so, so yeah, I might, I might have to not look at the comments on haters of Chris because that does piss me off too. <laughs> I've been talking to some of the fighters and I was like, you know, we should do a thing where you read your mean, you know, like the, the reading the mean tweets. So like, I, I was lucky enough to have a couple of videos go super viral with the alligators and the amount of people are like, I hope you die. And like, all like just awful stuff. And I love it. So like, it was great. Like people would put it on their, their page and I would actually go on their page and I was like, that guy sucks. I hope he dies. And they're like, I agree. And it was me. You know what I mean? Like, have you ever thought about like doing some, like reading some mean tweets just for, uh, just for fun? You know, I could, Sometimes I'm like, damn, that hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm like, really? Is that true? Like, oh, there's, there's, I'm trying to think of some of the meanest tweets that I've had. I mean, yeah, I've had some mean ones. I'm just like, I try not to give it my attention and energy because honestly, it can fuck you up. It can fuck your, your, sure. it can distract you. And it's like, you don't want to have to be filtering who you are, your own performance, your own physical, like, what you put out there on a physical platform because of losers that are going to literally, you're, you're never going to please them anyways. They're, they weren't going to support you, whether you won, lost, fucking saved a baby. It doesn't matter. The, those types of people are never going to support you anyways. And so, you know, I've had to learn a good lesson in just like not even giving them a cent of your energy. All right, Whitney John, no fighter nickname. I we appreciate your time. We love that you uh, you know, you take such good care of our guy Kamozi. He's super active on the Reddit, so we we really love him. So we appreciate yeah. that. Absolutely. Thanks for always being so good to him too. It, I, right. We appreciate it. All right, have a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.